I spent four years of my life working on a short film and this is what happened. First jury distinction for a short film is given to first show. <laughs> and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna be talking about the story of when I made my first short film and the idea of this video is to try to inspire you to create your own project or maybe finish that project that you never finished. But first let me give you some context on this story. I was living in Brazil at the time. I'm from Argentina originally and I was working in advertisement. I am a VFX artist and I had at the time already several years of experience. Although I wasn't the best, I had experience on the industry and the job was very good but I was at a moment in my life where I was very uninspired and I was really reluctant to learn new things. I really stuck creatively and not really motivated at all. And that was only my fault. The job was great. The studio was among the best I could find, uh, but I simply didn't feel like learning stuff. And I was very slow at work. And I remember a series of things that I needed to do that I didn't manage to do it very well. So the thing is that one day I arrived at work to learn that I'm fired. I am in this foreign country without a job. I was very ashamed. I was very scared. So I decided I needed to change my way of thinking about my professional career and start becoming more serious about it. I started by buying a rendering course, super good. And with this new knowledge, I decided that maybe I should go for something bigger, something that would give me more opportunities and maybe take that next step on my career. I decided that I wanted to move from advertisement to film and maybe travel to Europe and work in films there. Uh, that was like a big dream, working on the, in the big movies, right? And in my mind, maybe having a short film would show that on top of my technical side that maybe wasn't the strongest, I could show a bit of my career creative side that was for me a bit unexplored. Although I always was uh, very curious about uh, the, the creative side, I never really took the step to learn and do more of that. So I figured like this was the opportunity. I, I was working freelance and I didn't have many jobs at the time. It was kind of slow on the beginning. So I decided that I would use that dead time to learn and make my own project. So that's how the idea of making a short film came to be. I didn't know anything about writing a film or anything about it. I just knew I wanted to make one, but that was the extent of my knowledge. Of course, the first thing was I needed to write the film. So I opened a blank page on Google Docs and I started trying to write and very quickly I realized I didn't know how to write a dialogue. I didn't know what to talk about. And if you're anything like me, you probably have like 100 projects that you started and you never finished. And I didn't want that to happen to this film. So I figured that I needed to talk about something that was interesting to me. At the time I was watching a lot of these true crime documentaries, but I was especially interested in the ones that talked about the background of the criminal, where they were born and how was their childhood and how come they became these monsters, right, that committed these crazy crimes. And I thought that maybe it was a cool idea to make an animation film touching upon these topics in a more serious manner. Not so much about the shock value of the action, but about the psychological side of it. I wanted to tell a story of a character from birth to grave and what happened in their life and what they did from these things that happened. But when I was trying to write it, I very quickly realized that writing dialogues is not easy, especially in a language that is not your own. As you might notice, eh, English is not my main language. So it was very, very hard for me. And I felt very cringe when I was trying to do it. And this even made me abandon the project for a month or so. But after a while, I decided that no, I needed to go back and I needed to work on it. My idea was maybe let's not use dialogues and let's make it like a silent film where the story is told more 
by the environment and what the characters are doing. And this became a bit of a challenge. So definitely was not easy. And even with that idea, no dialogues and everything, it was still really hard for me to go on and write anything. So one trick that I figured out was instead of writing the actual script, I would write what I wanted people to feel and what I wanted the film to be like. So I would write stuff like, the film needs to be mysterious. This shot needs to show that the character is feeling lonely. Or for instance, I would say this shot needs to explain a bit about the relationship between the character of the mother and the character of the kid. Of course, this was a first draft, but it helped me a lot to understand better what I wanted to tell and what I needed to try to explain on each shot. And after that, I started getting a very vague idea of the story of the film. So slowly, I was rewriting it and rewriting it until it started to take shape. So that's how the idea of the film came to be, this series of snapshots telling you the most important and pivotal moments on the life of the character, just to give you an idea of this biography of the character from birth to grave and all what happened in between, the most important moments for the story. So now I had a very solid idea of what I wanted to make, so I started to make drawings and even though I'm terrible at drawing um, this really helped me to solidify in my mind the idea of the film looking for references looking for things that I liked so in the end the film was a mashup of things I was interested in so for the aesthetic part I was really into these tilt shift pictures that make a real size scenarios look like miniature and I decided that I wanted to have something like that on the film but when I started trying to make environment in 3d I realized it was like a lot of work so an idea came about and I started working on this small diorama this way I achieved two things for the film the first one was that I would contain all the detail on a smaller size of the screen uh, and this way I didn't need to compromise the amount of detail I wanted to add. I could add a lot of detail to a small space and this gave me the opportunity to, to take a higher level of detail uh, in all the shots um, because I was focusing the attention on a very small part and basically the background and the foreground would be very very out of focus so you had a very very small stripe of detail and I could really focus the detail there and make it look as good as I can. And then the background and the foreground would be more defocused and then the sides would be literally a void on black. And, and that was very economic on the technical side. But also it gave me this narrative element of trying to show that the characters were feeling trapped in their own reality. Even when they are outside, even when they are at home, the space is narrowed down just to show you the action they are performing and this creates this, this feeling of, of them being trapped, of them um, not being able to escape their own realities. And this is a very powerful element that I figured it would help me a lot to tell the story I wanted to tell. It's a very eerie and dark story, so I, I figured that this would, uh, this would be a great addition to it. So I had a very, very good idea already of what I wanted to make now I needed to start making it. And that's the part that I had more experience because my background of VFX, I knew, I knew how to make um, basic animations, I knew how to make models and lighting and a lot of things. But of course I needed to learn a lot of other things. But my, the main idea of the film was for me to learn new stuff. So I really wanted to push it and try to make it as good as possible within my skills. So my, the first step for me was to make an animatic. Basically this means that I created a very, very rough animation as quickly as I could. And I added some sound effects just to give me a rough idea. And the powerful thing about doing this is that you get to see your film before starting working on it. And that's why it's so important to try to block your projects because if you cannot make it work on that format, it still won't work when you have the great animation and the great lighting and the best sound in the world. So with this animatic, I started like annoying my family and my friends to watch the films, to give me feedbacks, especially people that I respected, their knowledge about the topic, right? I really relied on them to tell me what they thought about my idea. And once I had that, I simply started producing shot by shot and learning a lot on the process. It was a very, very slow process that took me four years. And when I say four years, of course, I'm talking on and off. I, wouldn't, I didn't work 24 hours a day, every day for four years. So my calculations are roughly about 1,500 hours 
of work, which is like going to work eight hours a day, the weekdays for like nine months. So it's, it is a lot of time. It is a lot of work in order to maintain a social life and not get a divorce and a day work and everything. As I was working on the film, my strategy was I would wake up 7 a.m. and I would work until around 8, just one hour a day. And from there, I would just go to work because I got another job and do my, and do my normal social life. And at night, maybe I would just spend time with my wife and live my normal life. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, one hour in the morning, but doing that every day, little by little, just created a habit that I would uh, just do it every single day. And over the course of four years, that built up for fi up to 1500 hours and, and I had a short film finished. So I would say the best thing you can do is probably create a routine that you can follow and that doesn't intervene with your life. If you want to work every night, every day, that's great, but that comes at a price. You won't be able to spend time with anybody else. You will be working all the time and that can build up frustration and maybe make you abandon the project because there will be things all the time coming along and maybe you have to go visit somebody and then you need to travel and then you need this and that and you will stop working on your film constantly. But if you find something that you can do when nobody else needs you, like in the morning for instance, then that's great. That's a great time to work on your film. Even if it's 20 minutes, the most important thing is that you do it every day or as often as you possibly can. That is the story of how I made it. That is how uh, I finished this process. I had my film, I had the sound, I had everything was done. So I started showing it and I got in contact to a production company uh, called Atlas V through my brother that he worked with them in the past and they saw my film and they liked it. And they told me that they could help me get into festivals. I, I, I didn't even know about festivals. I really went into this just to get a job in the film industry and I didn't really think much about anything else. But it turns out uh, to my surprise, there is a huge festival world where people all over the world send their films, they select a bunch of films and they compete for an award. And the thing is, people pay to, people pay, let's say, I don't know, 10 pounds to go to a festival that is in a cinema and they see a series of films over the course of a week. And you get big films and you get independent films, animation festivals, so each festival has its own niche and the first one I sent it to was called Annecy which is a very very big animation festival and from that point I just waited I'd sent it to Annecy and I waited and amazingly to me it was selected and this meant that I got to travel to France for free to Annecy to present my film in person into a to a cinema full of people that I didn't know and this was so exciting and so unexpected for me that I cannot tell you how happy and how excited I was. And this was a breakthrough for me. And then we took this opportunity. My sister and my brother came to France where the film would be projected. And my wife was there and it was just the family there on the cinema and the film came into the big screen. And I cannot tell you how amazing it felt uh, just to be participating in this festival was really one of the most unforgettable moments and made every frustration and everything, every struggle that I went through to make the film worth it. Really, it is worth finishing your project. It is worth going all the way and trying to have something finished because you never know what that will bring to you. So we are in France that it comes to the moment where they will decide who are the winners. And to my surprise, Pulsion gets selected for a special mention in Annecy, one of the biggest festivals of animation. So I go out in, on the stage and I am thanking everybody and it's so surreal and so magical and so perfect that really it was one of the best nights of my life. It was amazing and I won this beautiful crystal award that I have here at home. And winning this important prize was the start from a very crazy moment of my life that was uh, when once you win in one festival, instead of you sending the film to festivals, you get a lot of festivals sending you emails, asking you to send the film so you can have it on their festival. So 
I think I was extremely lucky to start with that festival and win that festival first because that brought two years of craziness where I would send the film to over 70 festivals all over the world, screening it on cinemas. I got to travel for free to a lot of countries. They would just pay for my flight and the hotel for me to, to be there present to introduce the film to the audience and I would give interviews and it was insane. Now the question is from that point I got like 16 awards internationally. I presented the film in 70 different festivals on cinemas. Uh, I gave interviews. Did I became famous? Did I became rich? Did my life change from that point? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, I barely made any money from the film. Uh, from some of the awards I got, I got some money and that was amazing, especially because I didn't spend money on the film to make it, I was just making it on my laptop at home, so I didn't really spend resources other than my time. So the amount of money that I made is definitely less than 1500 hours of work in the industry, for instance. But what I got from the film was that I got a lot of new opportunities coming from that film. Since I finished it, I got a lot of calls and a lot of emails of people offering me directorial roles on uh, advertisement, on other short films. They would just send me a script and they would tell me to uh, think of an idea or try different things. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of those opportunities to fruition. I would just work on for a while on those ideas and things, but then they wouldn't pan out. It's very hard. So in the end, I haven't really became film director out of the film, but it definitely changed a lot uh, my perception of my skills and my capabilities and also how am I perceived for, from other artists and from companies, right? When I go there and I show that I am a director and I won awards and everything, definitely brings an air of respect that I wouldn't have otherwise. And it doesn't mean that you need to have this to be respected, not at all. You can be amazing at your work and that will be enough for you to be respected. But definitely something that it is a differential for my career. And from this experience and from this small success, I got the opportunity to then work in other things. So I finished that film and I didn't really feel like making another film. I just wanted to try something different now. And I got this idea, I wanted to make a video game. And one of the skills that I got from making this film was to work every day on a project and be very constant about it. So that was, that was the number one thing that I take away from this experience. I know how to sit down and work on something every day. And that's what I did. I decided I wanted to make a video game that is called Synth Hunters. And I simply sat down, I started working on it, thinking on it every day, writing about it, and eventually started posting on Instagram more and more and growing a small following about the game, people that is interested about it. And again, Atlas V, the same company that helped me with my short film, contacted me and told me like, hey, if you're making this, let's do it together from scratch and let's make a big game, an amazing game. So as you can see, making the film, although it didn't make me famous, it didn't make me rich or anything like that, it really opened a lot of possibilities for me. And right now I'm a director on a video game. Uh, that is something I always wanted to do. And if, if you want to learn the story more in detail about the video game, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to make a video explaining how it works working with a production company, how it works in terms of contract, in, term, in terms of a, of a lot of things and that you might be interested in. Let me know in the comments. So that's the story of my short film, How I Made Pulsion. If you want to watch it, it is in the description of this video. And if you have any extra questions, I will answer your questions in the comments. So just feel free to go down there and ask your questions. And I hope this video inspires you to continue working on your projects. It is worth it. It is the best you can do for yourself, for your career. And if you need help, if you need mentoring, I also have a Discord server uh, that will be linked in the description of this video where you can just contact me and we can schedule a call to talk one-on-one -on -one about your project. And maybe I can give you specific ideas or maybe I can orient you on how to organize your things. So I hope this helps you. I hope this inspires you or at least entertains you for five minutes. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. And see you on the next one. Bye.